I want to thank you once again. I'm going to read the scripture written here. And then I'm going to take the Lord's my heart about Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Coming from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 21. And it says, And when they do not unto Jerusalem, and will come to Bethany, as the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass, tied, and a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, our king cometh unto thee, meat and sitting upon an ass, and the coat and the fold of it. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on them their clothes, and they set him their own. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Other cut down branches, because it was palm branches, from the palm trees and strawed them into the way. And the multitude went before and, the, and followed crying, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that's come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. The city was moved, saying, Who is this? And we know they said it's a prophet. Prophet of Israel. May the Lord have the blessings of the here this holy word. Let us pray. Father, we come once again. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord. I come thank you for another opportunity to be used as an empty vessel. So speak to your people, Lord. Open their hearts, minds, and ears. That they'll receive your word today. Give them ears to hear. That they'll be edified and you'll be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I want to use for a thought today. Great expectation. All right. Great expectation. You know, often... In our life, we all have great expectations. And to expect something means that we have already figured it out in our mind how it's going to be. We have great expectations as parents for our children. We have great expectations uh, for our marriages, for our relationships. We have great expectations on our job. You know, we expect things to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. But if you're like me, if you live long enough, you find out that the greater your expectation, mm -hmm. the greater your disappointment. All right. mm -hmm. Amen. Some of you thought that the ceremony, the wedding ceremony, was the marriage. Uh -oh. That's just what it is, it's a wedding ceremony. The marriage come after that. All right. come on, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Everybody do the ceremony. Everybody that get married goes through the ceremony. Some whether they just go to justice peace and get married. But everybody don't do the marriage. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Because marriage is different. So in our text today we see we know that this is Palm Sunday, which means it's Passion Week. It's the last week that Jesus will be alive as he entered into Jerusalem. Okay, it's called the triumphant entry. They've been, the Jews have been expecting this for over 700 years. They've been, they've been prophesied that God was going to send them a Messiah, a Savior. So when he came on the donkey, it had been prophesied, so they know who he was. All right. You know, and when you come in there on the donkey, that's what the kings did 
where they wanted to make sure the people knew they were coming in peace. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't come in on no black stallion, yes, on no white horse. Yes. Now see, that means when we come in for war, mm -hmm. but they would come on a dog. And he didn't even take the dog, he took the coat of a dog. Mm -hmm. He went in, feet almost rubbing the ground. Mm -hmm. He was too big for the coat. He just riding it, letting them know, look, I'm, I'm, all, I'm coming in peace. All right. But they expected something totally different. Right. So when he came in, they said, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna means save now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know. That's what that means. Save now. The Jews wanted Jesus to come in and set up his kingdom. Mm -hmm. On this earth. They wanted him to overtake the Romans who have been oppressing them for so long. They wanted him to overtake the government. They wanted him to get rid of the people that's been giving them so much trouble. The very reason that Judas betrayed him is because he wasn't doing what he expected him to do. When he came, instead of talking about, you know, let's take the swords and go in and kill the king, and we go, he said, no, no, no. He said, we're going to love everybody. He said, love your enemies. Uh -huh. Bless those who curse you. And Judas was getting hotter and hotter. What is he talking about? We need to kill these Romans. We need to take over. We need to take our land back. And Jesus said, that's, that's not what I came to do. Because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So when he didn't do what they expected him to do, we know what happened. We're going to talk about that next week. Because see, when, when our marriage don't work out the way we expect it to, <laughs> things change. We're not talking about anymore how much I love you. We're not talking about how much I love you. I'm so I love you so much. That's that's done with now. Because things that you're not doing exactly what I expect you to do. See, I expect you to do everything I say. I expect to be able to change you. This is what happens. And so as they traveled with Jesus, they went into Jerusalem and they wanted to change him, but he came for a specific purpose. He didn't come to save them from the Romans right, right. because that wasn't their problem. Mm -hmm. Their problem was they were going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, what I want to do is save you completely. Mm -hmm. you, we, he said in this world we're going to have trials and tribulations. He said, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Yes, yes. Jesus suffered. The Bible said he learned obedience by the things that he suffered, yes. even though he was a son of God. Mm. Right. Now, if he suffered, I don't know why we feel like we're not going to do no suffering. Mm -hmm. When we call on the Lord, we want him to save us now. You might want well to be saying, Hosanna. Hosanna, show up right now, Lord. I need you to get me out of this mess right now. Whatever I got myself into, I, I don't want to hear nothing about the kingdom. I don't want to hear nothing about heaven. I need you to do something for me right now. I'm in a mess right now. They're telling me I'm going to die right now. And I need you to do it right now. But Jesus is not going to do it the way we expect him to. You know, it's funny, I, I prayed that God would give me peace and, and you know, and, and that he would put us all on one accord. I said, Lord, put us all on one accord. This was at the other church. So when I left the other church, the Lord told me, he said, I did what you prayed for. He said, you wanted to be at peace and you wanted to be all on one accord. <laughs> So I got what I prayed for. But he didn't do it the way I expected it. See, that's how what we got to learn from Jesus going in. The Bible says when he went in, 
Before he entered in, he looked on the city, and the Bible said that he wept. He wept over. Why? He said, if you knew just even this day, the blessings you could have right now. But he knew that they were going to reject him because he wasn't who they expected him to be. So when we have our relationship, we want to reject our own kids because they're not doing what we expect them to. So they were going to reject him because he wasn't the Messiah that they expected. People are rejecting you and me today because we're not who they expect us to be. I've had people tell me, you know, I, I like your church, but, you know, you don't tell people uh, not to celebrate Christmas. And you don't tell people about, you know, the cold and different things. I said, well, you know, I tell people what Jesus told them. And if that's not good enough, see, Jesus wasn't telling you don't celebrate Christmas. I didn't see nothing in the Bible. Jesus said nothing about none of that. Jesus was trying to tell you you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's the gospel. You need to repent and turn from your wicked ways. See, Jesus came telling them that. And they didn't want to hear that. Why? Because they had one agenda. And one agenda only, and that's they needed him to fix their problem. So when Judas betrayed Jesus, he didn't expect that he was going to surrender. See, he knew that they couldn't do nothing with Jesus. Because Jesus is God. Let's just put it out there. He couldn't do nothing with him. So when Jesus just surrendered and told him, you know, let him take him, he didn't know what to do. Every time we react because we don't, somebody don't meet our expectations, it's going to be a vicious cycle. It's going to be a vicious cycle. We do not get married. I didn't get married expecting my wife to please me. Because I know better. I know better. And if she got married expecting me to please her, she should know better. What we need to do is make get married so we can please God. Amen. You see what I'm saying? If I'm seeking to please God and she's seeking to please God, guess what? Whether I please her or not, really, it's not the issue. As long as God is pleased. But I can tell you right now, I've counseled so many people, women who wanted their husband, their husband had nothing to do with God. And they'd be pastors, just pray that he'll, John, to come around and you know, he'll start bringing the kids to church. And as soon as God answers that prayer, they leave John. <laughs> I'm like, your husband, God, and that the man is a godly man and change. He don't drink no more. He's bringing the kids to church. He's on the deacon board. He's been, why are you divorcing him? We grew apart. <laughs> See, she didn't want John to be a godly man. That's not what she wanted. What she wanted was somebody to do exactly what she said. And vice versa. The woman come to church, the man leave. Because they're not what they expect them to be. So we need to make sure that we understand. And when we have great expectations, because God, you're going to have them with God. Many of you have. You've been praying to God to save a loved one, right? And they die. Oh, my God. If you're not careful, you'll get mad at God. Why didn't you save my mom? Why did you let my child die? I'll never forget the woman asked me on nine. She said, where was God when my son died? And the Lord told me immediately. He said, you tell her I was sitting on the same throne that I was on when my son died. Come on, <laughs> he said, you tell her, her son is not no more important than my son. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He said, so you let her know. This is not no pity party. You can't blame God because everything God, Jesus didn't tell us what to do. He came down and showed us how to do it. Yeah. 
The Bible says he was tempted and suffered at all points, such as we did. Yet he didn't sin. So that means he was tempted to cuss people out, shoot them, stab them, tempted to lust after when he was tempted at all points, as any man would be. But he didn't yield to it. And thank God he did it. Because we'd all be lost if he did it. So he came and did what he knew we couldn't do. And we still can't do it. We couldn't save ourselves before Jesus came. And you can't save yourself after he the left. You know about to save yourself. We need Jesus to do it for us. And so what he did, he said, look, I'm going to set this thing up. And this was the beginning of it. When he came into Jerusalem, knowing that he wasn't going to leave. Now you think about that. Would you go into a city knowing that you're going to die there? He knew they were going to reject him Because he knew that they were looking for something totally different than what he was doing. And today we have the same thing. People want to come to church and they have certain expectations. Right. See, you, a lot of people come to church to be entertained. When you're not entertained, if you just get straight teaching, uh, it just wasn't for me. I, I just needed a little something else. Yeah, you need me to get up here turning flips and spinning on one hand and all that. No, no, ain't going to be none of that. I'm just going to teach straight up because that's the truth and that's the only thing that's going to set you free from yourself because we are bound by ourselves. Amen. That's the word of God is what's going to change us. So that's what we're going to get. Amen. We cannot be entertained. I'm not going to tell you how good you are. I'm not going to tell you how good looking you are. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to tell you how cute your kids are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Jesus didn't do that. I ain't never seen the Bible. He said, well, you're such a pretty little girl. <laughs> he would say, you better get saved and you better get her saved. Get her in church because she's going to go there. <laughs> so we need to train these kids up the way God says. The bottom line is we expect to have our cake and eat it too. You can't have your cake. When you eat it, it's gone. You can't eat it and then look around as another cake. If that was the case, we'd all be big as houses because I know I'd be eating cake all the time. But we can't have it and eat it too. And so Jesus said, you're going to have to do it my way. So there's a few things in, in, in Zechariah 9 and 9. They prophesied. He prophesied that the Messiah was going to come. And like these people, people of God, we have to make sure we don't have the wrong expectations. Because that's what messes us up. We want God to do everything for us. Is that right? When he came into Jerusalem, they wanted him to just fix everything. Fix all our problems. And guess what? That's what he came to do. All right. But he came to fix them spiritually, not carnally. He will fix our problems in this flesh if we receive him in the spirit. See, we, we want God to be close to us, but we don't want to draw him out of him. He says, if you draw him out of me, I'll draw him out of you. But if you pull him back, brother, you're just going to be back. I'm not moving. All right. Amen. Amen. So we can't grow unless we come in, come to Jesus. He said, come to me all who labor right. and are heavy laden. He said, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly heart. And you will find rest for your soul. People of God, we need soul rest. All right. That's what we need. We don't need to go to sleep. Half of you sleeping too much already. That ain't what you need. <laughs> you need rest for your soul. Spiritual rest. We need to stop letting the devil and this world, the cares of this world, run us rampant to where we too busy for God. That's right. When you get too busy for God, brother, you too busy. And you say, well, no, I'm putting the Lord first. I'm putting the Lord first. Why is he first set? Right. On the list of the things you want him to do? Right. <laughs> that way first, he's not first in your life. Mm -hmm. 
As the deacon said in his prayer, we need to get up every morning speaking to God. And when you speak to God, you're giving his word. I told you this before, the people here know this. Don't get up after you get through doing all the talking and leave. God might have something he wants to say. We get through talking, Lord, we pray for 30 minutes about what we want God to do and how we need him to help us and fix this and fix that. And as soon as we get through talking, we get up and leave. And Jesus is like, what if I had something to say? <laughs> well, no matter. I just said everything I got to get off my chair. I hope you do. No. We need to sit in silence and listen for God to speak to us in that still, small voice. Really tell people, y'all, we praying about things and God is trying to answer it. But we don't stay around long enough to get it. <laughs> Every time you say, oh, oh, Lord, what am I going to do with this, Lord? You know, I'm going to heat up and you get up and leave. <laughs> Just get it every time. I know he said, if you're going to ask me, you don't want me to answer it. Why are you coming around? And you know what God do? He lay you flat on your back. You wonder what happened. He said, I can't. I got a, something to say and you won't stop long enough to hear it. So what I'm going to do is have you fall out in the house. And have them put you in a hospital bed so you can't do nothing but look up and listen. You, you don't want to look at TV. You're tired of looking at TV and say, oh, now. I, now you're all ears. I, I can talk all I want to you now. And we wonder what's happening. He said, I need to slow you down. I can't talk to you like that. So our triumphal entry is Jesus' the first step. He said, I got to go in, but I'm not coming out. The way he came out was in all glory. All glory. Amen. I said, I want to get into that, but I got to save it for next week. Amen. We're going to talk about the coming out next week anyway. But there's a few things in Zechariah 9 and 9. I said, rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having what? Salvation. Salvation. Lowly and riding upon the neck. And the coat the fold of the neck. He brought to them salvation. But they didn't want to hear nothing about that. That's what's going on in the world today. We're trying to talk to people about being saved. Salvation. They're like, oh, I, I, I believe in God, but I don't have nothing to do with the church. Mm. I don't believe in organized religion. Mm -hmm. I said, well, who organized it? Uh, well, I guess God did. Okay, well, if God organized it, how you got the audacity to say that you don't need it? Mm. Amen. 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 So what we have to do is make sure that we do things God's way. We can't do it our way. And that's what we want to do. And I'm telling you, everybody say, Lord, Lord, y'all know my favorite scripture. It's not going to go to heaven. You can say, Lord, just scream it when you get up there. Just keep saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Ain't going to help. You're still going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Amen. He might just shut your mouth so you can't say it no more. Amen. <laughs> it was prophesied that he was coming. They knew he was coming, but they had the wrong idea. Amen. Amen. And Hosanna, like I said, it means save now. And oftentimes we are so impatient. That's why the word of God tells us to wait on the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. He said, wait on the Lord and he'll renew your strength. Yes. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You'll run and not go over. You'll walk. You won't faint. Mm -hmm. He said, but you got to wait. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait. We want everything right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. You wait when you go to in and out. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not understanding some of this stuff. Because <laughs> we can wait for everything else. You wait at Popeye's. You wait everywhere you go. And don't talk about Mario's. 
You want to wait to get you some fish tails? You wait. And I'm at the door, and you just congregate and wait. On you some fish tails, and you don't care if it's out in line. You talking about how your leg hurt, but you ain't up the line. But when it comes to Jesus, God, God, He said, wait on me. Why are you why are you so impatient when it comes to me? Why you won't put time in when it comes to me? We'll put time in everything we gotta do in life. Except Jesus. And then we turn around and say he's first place in our life. People of God, that's an oxymoron. Which means what? Hot? That's like hot ice. You can't say that. It is not true. So we need to stop saying it. So he said, you got to wait on me. They waited for him. And the reason they were so upset is because they had been waiting all these years. And he came and he wasn't going to do nothing that they expected him to do. Yes, he made him a little whip and whipped the money changers out of the temple and turned over the tables and, you know, he ended up selling lame goats and pigeons and cake fly and doves and you know, the money changes is, is, is being crooked, changing the money. He didn't, he said, this, this is a house of prayer. You done made it a den of thieves. That's why we ain't going to have none of that up in here. We're going to do it just like Jesus said do. Amen. Amen. And, and, and he going to be glorified in it. Amen. But it's, it, now, now when the people shouted, Hosanna, they were hailing Jesus as king. This is the first time that they had ever acknowledged Jesus to be the king of the Jews. The first time they ever acknowledged him. And all the people was doing it. Amen. They acknowledged him as king. They had been waiting. He came. It said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But I'm going to show you in Psalms 118 and 26. I'm going to show you. When I say it means save now. Psalm 118 to 26. Amen. Amen. It says right here. Verse, verse 21 says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and I'll become my salvation. The stone which the builder refused is become the headstone of the corner. They refused him, they rejected him, but he was a head corner stone. Nothing else is going to happen without the head stone. Amen. Amen. 23, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Right. Verse 25. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh. In the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. And that's what it means. Save now. When they were saying Hosanna, that's what they were saying. Save us now. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, well, I'm saving you now. But I'm saving you now in the spirit. Amen? Amen. They said, no, uh, I don't need you talking to me about my spirit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I need you to you know, get some money and put it in my pocket. I need you to get rid of these Romans and I need you to, you know, make things prosperous here and now. And Jesus said, that's not what you need. That's what you want. But that's not what you need. See, oftentimes we want God to give us what we want. And sometimes he will. By his permissive will. Just to let you see that that's not what you want. Amen. You got to be careful what you ask for. But he said, I'm going to supply your every need, not your want. God is in it for the long haul. See, God wants to bless us for eternity. Yes. Yes. He, he's not in the temporary stuff. That's us. We'll take a temporary blessing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, you can go out and get you a new car, new home. Go and buy whatever you want. It won't be long before you have buyer's remorse. <laughs> you know what that is? Because <laughs> after a couple of weeks, Amen. You didn't wash it up two or three times a week. You didn't, amen, shine your ties up. But after a month or so, 
that bill start hitting you real hard. <laughs> Amen. And you just look around and say, you know what? I should have left this on a lot. I didn't need it. Amen. But it's too late now. And God said, I've been trying to tell you you don't need it. But every time you come to me in prayer, when I get ready to talk, you get up and leave. So we just have to remember that Palm Sunday is one of the things that God allowed us to do in remembrance of Him. Communion was another. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you drink of this blood and eat of this bread, you remember that I promised you that I'm coming back to get you. Yeah. These people were so upset because God had promised them a Savior. And he sent a Savior. Yes. But if we don't get out of our carnal thinking and start thinking spiritually, just like those Jews back then, we will miss everything God is trying to do for us. We will miss the peace of God, the joy of our salvation. We'll miss it all because we'll be looking at what's in front of us. And he said, don't look at the things that you can see. Why? Because it's temporary. If you lose a loved one, it's temporary. Amen. People losing their homes, it's temporary. He said, forget that. You couldn't take the, who who, gonna, who leaving with their house? <laughs> Raise your hand. We're not taking nothing out of the Bible saying naked you came in. And naked we leaving. So what he said, this is temporary. Focus on what I got in store for you for eternity. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because if we don't, we're going to be just like them. He going to look and just weep. Say, boy, if you just knew what I had in store for you. He said, I'd like to take you up like a chick, take his chicks up. And chicken is just in my arms and just cuddling you, but you, you just don't get it. So we need to start doing what God says, and that's, that is glorifying Him. Yes. Stop seeking to do what we want to, and let's do what we need to do. Amen. To, to be saved. Amen. To make sure and very sure that we on the Lord's side, that we are headed in the right direction. Yes. Amen. I'm getting ready to close. But you know, uh, it was told to me one time, ain't no need of you climbing a ladder of success. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Only to get to the top and find out that you've been climbing the wrong ladder. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All Jesus is saying. So I want to thank God for each and every one of you today. Jesus' triumphal entry, he did it knowing that he was going to die. He was born to do it. He didn't turn around. He didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't say these people are not worth it. Why? Because he had a purpose. And if we're going to follow the Lord, we're going to have to live with purpose. Amen. Amen. And what is our purpose? Our purpose is in everything we do, do it to the glory and the honor of God. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise. If you like me, you're going to go get you one, uh, two or three of them fish tails from Mario. <laughs> Amen. We'll be waiting in line together. <laughs> you don't wait. You're going to wait on it. You're not going to walk out. Amen. Amen. And we'll do that for physical food, but why won't we do it for the spiritual food? Amen. That's going to last forever. Amen. Amen. So I don't want to end this broadcast without giving those who are watching on YouTube and our website an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the head of their life. And according to the Word of God, He said, if you confess with your mouth, but the most important part is believe it in your heart, not in your head. Everybody with head belief is headed to hell. Because head belief won't change your want to. Only heart belief. That's why he said, man, look at the outward appearance. He 
He, he said, but I'm searching your head. No. I'm searching your back. No. He said, but I'm searching your heart. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So Jesus said, the Bible said in Romans 9, 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he said, thou shalt be saved. So repeat after me, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe he died on the cross for my sin. And I believe on the third day you raised him from the dead. I believe according to the Holy Scripture that if I die believing in you, Lord Jesus, in my heart, in the last day, you will raise me from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask that you save my soul. In Jesus' name. According to the word of God, if you said that simple prayer, believe it in your heart, which only God knows. You've been born again. Yes. You can go to our website, thesolidrocknbchurch.org, and we have an email there, we have information, we have a phone number where we can help you in your new walk in Jesus Christ. Find your good Bible teaching church and make Jesus first place in your life. God bless you. Triumphal into passion.